here a little, a little bit here and uh, recognize Richard Crate, the Chief of Enfield, and the Representative of the Hampshire Chiefs of Crates. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm going to be brief. I've been represented already on some of my comments. Some of the other people. I am Richard Crate Jr. with the uh, Enfield Police Department, but I'm here on behalf of the New Hampshire Chiefs of Police Association. And we are strongly opposed to this legislation. Well, we understand the compassion argument, and my heart goes out to those people who suffer. We must balance between what may help a small portion of our society and harm it will cause to the larger group. That group I'm concerned about is our children. We're concerned that referring to marijuana as medicine has created the misconception that marijuana is not a dangerous drug. Marijuana use has increased in New Hampshire, while the use of tobacco and alcohol has decreased. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, studies show that someone who smokes five joints per week may be taking in as many cancer causing chemicals as someone who smokes a full pack of cigarettes every day. This is just one example of the known harmful consequences of marijuana use. With all due respect to our medical field, you're well aware of some of the problems we're dealing with with prescription drugs. You were just speaking about the prescription monitoring programs. Doctors are not immune to mistakes. And in some cases, they're not reviewing medical records. Lastly, we should not circumvent the FDA as this legislation does. We urge you to vote this bill in expedient to legislate, to legislate. Allow drugs to be studied, tested, and approved through the normal and safest process from the FDA. If you agree with the supporters of this legislation, then I urge you all to contact your congressional delegation and have this done through the FDA as all medication has to go through. Thank you very much for the <coughs> question. Yeah, Chief, I just have one question. As you know, we work together on the drug monitoring program. We have a lot of discussions about a lot of different things. Retirement, guns, yeah. marijuana. <laughs> the list goes on and on and on. This guy's a good guy. I, I just, I have to tell you, that we have got to find a way to balance law enforcement concerns and make this work. I'm not saying this is the right bill. I'm not saying I'm ready to support the bill. I'm just saying that this is the second or third hearing on this issue. I know some of the people involved in this issue. I know that there are dangers of marijuana that we're seeing as it boils over into all sorts of other drugs that are, are worse. But for some people, and we've seen them this afternoon, being able to smoke medical marijuana works. It does, and we know it. And I know you've told me that um, in many communities across the state, police chiefs are looking the other way, and I salute you for that. I don't know whether you're doing that or not, but I know some are. And, um, but I just, I don't know if this is the right bill. Apparently not from your point of view. I just, I think eventually, sooner rather than later, we've got to find a way to make this work. So that's more of a statement than a question. Well, I think. I told you that in private, I'm telling you that in public. And I think that the answer to that is to you know, take these, and, I, and as you know, I'm very compassionate, and I, I don't, I don't back down from a lot of things. But I think that taking it from Concord, taking it from this building, and putting that down into Washington is what needs to happen. And and everybody that's testified here before needs to make that effort and, and bring this before our congressional delegation and and have it studied down there, have it passed down there, and that alleviates all of these other concerns that we have, and, and it takes it away from that. No police chief, and, and I haven't talked to anybody who wants to see people suffering and see people who are, um, are having to go around you know, in this type of thing, but I don't think coming to Concord and, and legislating that way or in any other state is a, is a proper way that it needs to be done through the normal process of medication. Well, I appreciate that, having been down there. <laughs> it's not so easy. Well, I, I think if we push hard enough, we can get that. All right. I mean, you 
you've heard you've heard me say it in private and in public. I, I, I continue to hope that there's a, a resolution of this that works, whether it's nationwide or in New Hampshire. I, I'm not ready to say 409 is the right way, but it's a lot closer than the bill a year ago. And um, I will say, I think eventually, sooner rather than later, some medical marijuana legislation is going to pass. We'll be much better off to work together and make a, do it the right and, way. And, and we'll try to do what we can to, uh, to do that. The House just this afternoon voted to decriminalize marijuana. It's yeah. coming. But by one vote. I know. It's not going to happen today. <laughs> you see the point I'm making. Yes. Any other questions, Senator DeBoy? Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is uh, if, if we were to add to this amendment bill that we're discussing today a sunset while we make that waiver to Washington, would that change your position? I don't believe so, no. I, I think that. Um, Simply because I think it needs to come through the FDA is in our position. Well, the, and, and you know how slow Washington works. Unfortunately, yes. This could take years. Probably got to get started sooner than later. Though. Exactly. But the people that we're trying to help need to be, have some benefit now. How would you change this bill to make it satisfactory to allow Medical I don't think we can be out there. And the reason being is that if you just think about some of the stuff that has been talked about here um, in the last hour and a half or so, because of the, I'm not a physician, um, I'm not a chemist, there's a lot of things that, that need to be studied about this that unfortunately are going to have to take a little bit of time. Now maybe some of the, you know, some of the other countries have already done that, so that data may be available to speed up that process. But I think we have to look at how these are going to interact with other medications that these patients are taking and what are the effects of them so that they, from their doctor and with consultation with the doctor, they know what the effects are. One of the first speakers talked about, and we've all seen them on the things, you know, this medication may cause nausea, may cause it, you know, it's on the TV now. They know that because of the studies that they've done. So there needs to be those so that the doctors can best um, advise their patients of what the risks are, what the benefits are, and balance those two things out. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm surprised that you take that, that side. I'm, I'm very surprised that, that you're off on that tangent. What I really thought that you would zero in on is how the patients are going to get the cannabis by growing it themselves or having the care center grow with father. And that distribution I thought you would be more concerned with than being concerned with the effects and the use of, of the drug. Well I, I want to be brief. There there are, are concerns that we have um, with that with it falling into the wrong hands. With the fact that, that this is one step for, for some of the speakers here I think this is one step closer to the legalization of marijuana. I think you know, they use it this as a, a springboard for that. In the, in the hearings that we'll have, uh, now that it's passed the House, they'll be some of the same people uh, testifying in support of the decriminalization bill. But I also think that, that um, what we worry about is the abuse. You know, the, the people that will go and, and use this is, a, is an excuse. And what I've told uh, Representative America. Senator Forsyth, when we've had discussion before, is that make it as tight as possible, um, so that so that the you know sickest and neediest. That's one one way to sort of um, minimize some of those you know those concerns. Chief, one of the ways that you can stop the blanket decriminalization of marijuana is to cooperate and try to make the distribution of this as tight as possible with us, so that people can have the medicine that they need and satisfy law enforcement that the plan is controlled in a manner that can't be available to the general public, therefore not the, not creating a cottage industry. Well, I think there's two two issues through some of the bills that have happened in the past. One of them is putting our state workers at risk for you know, committing a federal 
offense. Um, you know, that's why this bill is drafted the way that it was to take that out of it. The other part is that I have made those, you know, those statements as uh, you know, the people that are supporting this have said. You know, I've sat down with, with Representative Merrick in the past, sat down uh, just recently with Senator Forsyth and talked to them. And the one thing that I've, you know, my drumbeat is I'm not going to support this. It needs to go through the FDA. But if you do draft this, make it as tight as possible. And I've given them examples of that. And, and uh, some suggestions in the Senate force, I listened to some of those and, and chose not to take all of them. But, but it's, it's that balance again. Thank you. Sorry. Um, a couple things. One is uh, one, of the, one of the beauties of what goes on in this building, in this room, is that everyone is able to voice their opinion, and that is the beauty of this. So um, I know it probably isn't easy when you uh, present your view, especially after the young lady who did an incredible job, um, and it's very you know emotional, and, and you know we want to support everyone who is suffering in our communities, and I'm sure that you do too. But you do take an oath to uphold the law. And I think that um, when you mentioned could we work on getting this to Washington and making a change, you're really talking about the FDA and going through the FDA so that this drug goes through the same process as other drugs. However, I think the problem and the slow, what slows us down, and the problem with it is the stigma about this particular drug. And I was just wondering if someone in your position um, would be able to help with changing that stigma and treating this as a drug that could go through the FDA. You see what I'm saying? It's that it's impossible when you've got the stigma attached to it, and what can you do in your position to address that issue? Well, I think by um, distinguishing the two things, I mean, we, we have you know, the opiates, you know, that we're seeing uh, killing people in our state right now, prescription opiates that are doing that. You know, they've been able to, because the FDA has, has put those out there, other things. You know, oxycontin isn't called heroin. But if you look at it, it's very similar to that, and it's probably, again, I'm not a chemist, so I don't know, you know all the particulars about it. But I think there is a way to do that, but because the FDA has gone through that, that's the process. Um, I think looking at it, and, and you know, you can always, you know, expand things. It's very hard to, to restrict it once it's out. The old genie in the bottle analogy. So I think making it, you know, tight as possible. But again, I, I'm a firm believer that if, um, if enough people reach out to you know, our congressional delegation and say, this is what it is, this is what needs to happen. If they hear from enough, I think that will have an effect. You know, I think that's what makes our country great, is that we can, um, if we're a people of the government, and we can, you know, go through that without having all these other things. Um, I think it's very difficult when the same people who are testifying in support of medical marijuana are also testifying in support of decriminalization. Because that's truly how they feel about it. That creates, you know, some problems, I think some respect because they lose that credibility. Um, but we've had a lot of people here that, that we won't see on the decriminalization before. Senator Sanborn. Thank you, sir. Chief, thanks for coming down. Um, as you know, Craig family and my family go way back in the upper valley. Yes. Way back. You guys are a great family and you're wonderful people. And what I love is that we share those true traditions and traditions that are so important to us. And with all due respect, Congressman Bradley, with all respect to the world, you want to put the future of this state of people in the hands of D.C. or the, in the hands of the people of New Hampshire. And I'd submit to you that I think the people of New Hampshire have a much clearer understanding of what is important to us. And you know, I know you work with Senator Forsyth, and he's my office mate, and he's tried very hard to make a good bill, a bunch of other people. And I hear you talk about how the FDA is a big hurdle for you. And that's a big hurdle for all of us. So I ask if you would consider continuing to work with them. I think you guys have come pretty close on some issues, and there might be a couple of what we call hanging chads, I guess. Um, 
that might need to work. And I just, and I understand you're in a real tough spot. We all get that. And we're all in a tough spot with this one. And I really ask that you go sit down with Senator Forsyth again and see if you guys can find some way to find some level of comfort. I'm always willing to work with that. I, I don't see, I see hurdles differently. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it's because of my upbringing, I think with hard work you can, you know, get results. So I see Washington, yeah, you know, the senators obviously done that, but I, I think if enough people can work on that, that, that that's the route that really needs to go. And, and I think that will uh, serve our people better than, than what's being proposed here today. I really appreciate the consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Chief, thank you very much. Boy, it's a pleasure. He is one of the best guys. I can attest to that. I know we all can beat the light down here, but you're awesome. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Now it's your turn, Ms. Echo. Oh. <laughs>